Okay, let's unpack this. Imagine a medical mystery, right? One that stumped some of the brightest scientific minds for, what, over four decades now? Easily, yeah. A relentless challenge where the target constantly shifts, constantly evolves. It just mocks every attempt to pin it down. That really sums it up. That, my friends, has been the uphill battle in the quest for an HIV vaccine. For generations, it's often felt like this um, relentless game of scientific whack-a-mole. You hit one thing, another pops up. Exactly. Every time researchers thought they had a lead, the virus mutated, just leaving frustration unanswered questions. It's been incredibly challenging. But today, we're not just scratching the surface. We're diving deep into a new study. And this represents a truly exciting breakthrough. It really does. People are calling it a major leap forward in our understanding, our approach to finally developing an effective HIV vaccine. Yeah. This isn't just, you know, showing a promising initial response. No, it's much more fundamental. What's truly fascinating here, I think, is that this research has uncovered not just a new strategy, but a powerful, previously hidden antibody target. A new target. Yeah. Right. And this allows us to understand specifically why certain antibodies are so incredibly effective against such a diverse virus. It gives us a clearer, um, a more precise map for future vaccine development. Which is absolutely crucial in a field this complex. Couldn't agree more. So vital. Exactly. <laughs> so our mission for this deep dive is to explore this groundbreaking study. It was published in Immunity May 7th, 2025. It's a top journal, yeah. We'll look at why HIV has been so extraordinarily difficult to pin down how these scientists developed this really ingenious two-step strategy. Very clever stuff. What incredible, highly encouraging results they saw in their animal models, and maybe most importantly, what this all means for the long-term future of an HIV vaccine. This is for you, our curious listener. You want to grasp the cutting-edge science, understand the significance without getting totally bogged down in jargon. Hopefully we can make it clear. Okay, so before we jump into these exciting new findings, let's quickly set the stage. I mean... It seems almost unbelievable we still don't have an HIV vaccine, right? Hmm. Especially when we've got vaccines for measles, polio, even COVID-19 pretty quickly. Yeah, it's a fair question. So why has HIV been such a monumental task, one of modern medicine's biggest challenges? That raises an incredibly important point. And the core of the answer, really, it lies in HIV's remarkable, almost unparalleled ability to mutate. Mutate. Changes genetic makeup. Exactly. At an astonishing rate. Think of it like uh, trying to hit a moving target that not only changes speed and direction constantly, uh -huh. but also changes its shape, its color, its camouflage. There are literally millions of different HIV strains circulating globally. Right. Oh, millions? Wow. And even within a single infected person, you'll find a diverse population of slightly different variants. Traditional vaccines, they usually work by teaching your immune system to recognize one specific version of a virus. Like a snapshot. Kind of, yeah. But with HIV's rapid, constant evolution, that approach is almost impossible. It's always, you know, one step ahead. So the immune system just can't keep up with all the different versions, all the disguises HIV throws at it. It's like trying to catch smoke. That's a good analogy. This is where I've heard scientists talk about broadly neutralizing antibodies, or BNABs. Mm. Sounds like they might be the immune system's, I don't know, ultimate counter strategy, learning to hit that moving target. Precisely. That's the hope. BNABs are truly special because they represent a kind of immunological master key. A master key. I like that. Yeah. Instead of recognizing just one specific strain, they can simultaneously recognize and block many, many different HIV strains at once. And critically, this includes those hard to stop strains. A really tough one. The ones that are usually highly resistant to other antibodies. So think of it like this. Most antibodies are like a custom made key for one specific lock. If the lock changes even slightly, the key doesn't work anymore. But BNABs, they're like a universal skeleton key. They can open many different locks, even if they're subtly different. Okay, that makes sense. Now, some people do naturally produce these BNABs after HIV exposure, often after many years. But the huge challenge has been reliably inducing them with a vaccine in healthy people. Getting the body to make them on demand. Exactly. In animal models and ultimately in humans. This ability to create these master key antibodies reliably, it's been a long sought goal almost mythical for researchers, a true holy grail in vaccine development. That makes perfect sense. Given how frustratingly elusive HIV is, these BNABs really are a tantalizing possibility, aren't they? Absolutely. A potential game changer. So if we can harness them, this is where the Scripps Research and Karolinska Institute collaboration comes in. 
Their ingenious approach seems to have cracked some of the code. They devised this two-step vaccination strategy. What was the first key innovation? What problem were they tackling right at the start? Well, the first crucial step, and it's often underestimated in vaccine design, was engineering a much better mimic for the HIV spike protein. The spike protein, that's the bit on the outside. Exactly. It's a critical component on HIV's surface. It's what antibodies target to block infection, and it's also how the virus attaches to our cells. Previous vaccine designs often struggled because their spike protein mimics were, well, unstable. They fell apart. Pretty much. They might fall apart after injection, or they didn't quite resemble the actual viral spike protein in its true native form. Imagine trying to train your immune system to recognize a suspect, but you keep showing it blurry, flickering images. Yeah, very effective. Right. This team's new spike mimics, however, were designed to be incredibly stable, and they closely resembled the HIV spike protein's actual structure, keeping their shape for much longer. This stability is absolutely vital. Why stability is so important here? It's vital for eliciting a strong, focused, and accurate immune response. It ensures the immune system is learning to recognize the right target consistently. Okay, so they started with a robust, stable, accurate target. Got it. With this new spike mimic, then came the two-step vaccination strategy you call the clever. Yeah. Like training the immune system, almost an immunological boot camp. That's a great way to put it. Think of it as a guided, deliberate training program for the immune system, like a specialized military drill. First, they administered a priming vaccine. Priming, okay. This initial shot used a version of their stable spike mimic that lacked its usual sugar molecules. Sugar molecules? On a virus. Yeah, they coat the protein. These sugars act like a thick, slippery camouflage or a defensive shield around the virus's spike protein. Ah, uh, so they hide the important parts. Exactly. They hide the critical parts that antibodies would normally latch onto, making the virus incredibly difficult to detect and neutralize. By removing these sugars in the priming stage, the scientists essentially stripped away the virus's disguise. Okay, so they peeled off the camouflage. And this exposed a critical, conserved region of the spike the CD4 binding site. Ah, uh, the CD4 binding site. You mentioned that earlier. Yeah. So if the sugars are camouflage, what exactly is the CD4 binding site? Why expose it early? Absolutely. Think of the CD4 binding site as HIV's keyhole. The entry point. The specific spot it absolutely must use to unlock and enter our human immune cells. It's highly conserved, meaning it doesn't change much between strains because if the virus changes this keyhole too much... It can't get in anymore. Right. It can't infect cells effectively. <laughs> right. So by designing a vaccine that specifically targets this unchanging keyhole by stripping away the sugar camouflage first, scientists can train the immune system to block the virus right at its most vulnerable, unchangeable entry point. So the priming step was like saying, look, here's the real target. Precisely. Showing the immune system exactly what to look for, the most critical, stable part of the enemy. And then came the booster shots. That's the second part of the strategy. How did they build on that? Exactly. After two initial priming doses sort of setting the stage, they followed up with five booster shots, each given about 12 weeks apart. Now, crucially, these booster spike proteins did have their sugar coats intact. Ah, uh, so the camouflage was back on. It was back on, yes. But here's the twist. The spikes were from different HIV strains for the boosters. Oh, interesting. Why different strains? This deliberate sequential strategy was designed to retrain and refine the immune system's response. It's like um, showing a police dog a specific scent. Right. Then training it to find that same scent even when it's in a crowded, noisy place with lots of distractions, the immune system learned to recognize that same critical CD4 binding region, even when it was partially hidden by sugars. Mm -hmm. And even when the rest of the virus's surface looked a bit different because it was from other strains. Javier Ganaga, one of the script scientists, really emphasized this wasn't just random vaccination. It was planned. Highly planned. A rational, structure-guided approach, he called it designed to elicit the right kinds of antibodies, a really intelligent way to teach the immune system. That is an incredibly thoughtful, really nuanced approach. So did this immunological boot camp actually pay off? What did they see in the animal models? It absolutely did. The approach yielded incredibly encouraging results, a significant step forward. Several vaccinated animal models, macaques, specifically produced powerful antibodies. A the kind they wanted. Yes. Antibodies capable of neutralizing tier 2 HIV strains. Okay, remind us what tier 2 means again. 
Right. So imagine HIV strains on a spectrum. Tier one are maybe the easier ones, the ones our immune system sometimes handles okay. Tier two strains, though, they're the fast, evasive, heavily armored ones, often cloaked in those sugar molecules we talked about. The really hard ones to stop. Exactly. They represent the truly tough, real-world viruses. Yeah. Neutralizing these tier two strains with a vaccine, that's a massive leap. Okay, that's huge, but you said there was something even more powerful. Yes. Here's the really headline-grabbing finding. From one animal model, researchers isolated a specific family of antibodies. They named it LJF00034. LJF0034. And this LJF0034 family did something truly remarkable. It neutralized nearly 70%. 70%. Of a global panel of 84 diverse HIV strains. Mm. This level of breadth, you know, the range it covers in non-human primates is incredibly exciting. Unprecedented, really. Sweetheart Bale, another co-first author, rightly highlighted that. Wow, nearly 70% of a global panel. Yeah. That is a huge number for HIV, given how much it changes. It's a remarkable figure. What does that breadth actually mean, practically? And then they found something new about how these antibodies work. Well, practically, that breadth signifies these antibodies aren't just hitting one or two variants. They're effectively targeting a vast array of the real-world HIV landscape. So a vaccine based on this might actually work against lots of different strains people encounter. That's the implication, yes. It suggests we're getting closer to that universal key idea. And yes, they absolutely did find something new about how they work. Using advanced structural techniques, they looked really closely. Like molecular microscopes. Kind of, yeah. They showed that antibodies like LJF0003 bound to a previously undescribed site on the virus's spike protein. A totally new spot. A totally new spot. It bridges two different sections of the spike protein. Think of it like a newly discovered, highly vulnerable hinge. An Achilles heel. Exactly. Yeah. A previously hidden Achilles heel. This new binding location is incredibly powerful information for future vaccine development. It's not just another target, it's a highly conserved site, one HIV struggles to mutate away from without losing its ability to infect. Because changing it would break its own key. Precisely. Discovering this allows researchers to focus vaccine design on a stable, vulnerable point. It tells us not just that the approach works, but specifically, and with incredible detail, why it works and how to optimize it. Richard Wyatt noted that. That deep understanding, that's what turns a promising result into a foundational breakthrough. Couldn't have said it better myself. So this is far more than just a promising animal study. It's a scientific revelation. New tools, a clearer roadmap. What does this all mean for someone listening right now, thinking about the long-term goal of an HIV vaccine? When might we actually see one? It means we've gained significant strategic ground. Richard Wyatt was clear, you know, this is far from a final vaccine and it's important to manage expectations. Right. No overnight cures. No. But he rightly emphasized that having a new, highly effective target is incredibly exciting and will help shape our efforts moving forward. The ultimate goal will likely involve a combination of vaccines. A cocktail approach. Probably. Vaccines producing different types of BNABs, all working synergistically for maximum broad-spectrum protection. Imagine an entire arsenal of these master keys, each designed for a different crucial lock on the virus. This new target is a critical addition to that arsenal. And what's truly amazing is that this isn't just theoretical. There's already movement towards human trials. Yeah. Yes, that's perhaps the most exciting practical outcome right now. One of the vaccine candidates used in this very study specifically, that stable spike protein without the sugars used for priming. The one that stripped the camouflage. That's the one. It's already being tested in a phase one clinical trial in humans. Already? That's fast. It is. These trials evaluate safety, initial immune responses, and early results from those human participants are actually expected soon. Wow. This rapid translation from research to human trials really underscores the confidence the scientific community has in this approach. It suggests this isn't just another small step. It feels like a genuine shift in strategy. What an incredible deep dive. We've seen how decades of relentless scientific effort are finally yielding truly exciting breakthroughs. It's quite something. From understanding HIV's insane mutation rate to this ingenious two-step strategy stripping the disguise and, crucially, discovering this powerful new antibody target. Huh. This study from Scripps and Karolinska is just a profound testament to persistence and innovative thinking. Indeed. And this work really underscores the immense power of that rational, structure-guided approach. Tackling complex biological problems not just by trial and error, but with deep understanding. Right. 
It's not just about a single discovery, but about understanding how the immune system can be precisely coaxed, trained, to respond effectively against such an evasive enemy. It gives us a real strategic advantage going forward. And that brings us to a provocative thought for you, our listener, to consider. This study showed the power of a highly specific multi-stage strategy to train the immune system against a constantly changing target like HIV. Mm. So what other seemingly intractable medical challenges, or maybe even non-medical problems, might be unlocked by applying a similar rational, structure-guided approach, systematically revealing hidden vulnerabilities, hidden opportunities that were previously obscured? Something to ponder as science continues its relentless, methodical, and often surprising pursuit of knowledge. Definitely food for thought. Thank you for joining us on this deep dive. My pleasure. Until next time, keep that curiosity well fed. Hmm?